New from Radiotity is a new dual band HT that is Bluetooth programmable, USB cable chargeable, and uh, IP56 compatible. And it's coming up today on Ham Radio 2.0. Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. Uh, on this channel, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing below. So new from Radiodity is this dual band uh, GS5B. It has, um, it has an app that you can download from the Radiodity website, both for Android and iOS. Uh, you just go to the ch check the link below uh, for the page that goes directly from the YouTube description to the page for this radio. And on on that page, it has a QR code both for Android and for iOS where you can scan the QR code and download the app into your phone. And then you can use that app to program channel memory channels and even VFO and uh, back in radio settings into the radio. So we're going to do that here in just one second. First, I, I just wanted to kind of show you guys what was in the box and what the radio looked like. This is a standard box. This is what it looks like. At least it's not very generic. Um, it does come with a programming cable, which is a standard two-prong Kenwood connector right there. And this is probably a prolific chip, although I've not plugged it in yet. I haven't needed to plug it in yet because it is Bluetooth programmable. That's what we're going to do with it. It does have a desk charger. So you can have it sitting on the desk charger at home and then use the micro USB charger in the car or out and about somewhere else. And then it's got your standard manual battery clip, one antenna, one battery. It's got a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. We'll look at that in a second. Look, let's look at the battery. That's the... Uh, Okay, so it does have a voice prompt. You might have heard that just then. If not, I'll play it again here in a second. But here's the screen. It's a nice color screen. Uh, let's go around the radio real quick, and I'll show you what it looks like. We'll come back into the menus real, real fast. It is, uh, it's what they call IP56 compatible. So they say it's rainproof. It's not um, submergible, but you can get it rained on. It'll be okay. It does have dual PTTs. One and two, that's what, this is a one, that's a two. You can't really see the one very well. But uh, if you hit the top PTT, it will key the top band here because it's dual display. If you hit the bottom PTT, it keys the bottom band. So you can see that uh, the top band is selected with the arrow on the right over there. But if I push the bottom PTT, it changes for a second. KC5 HWB testing, just like that. Uh, this is a programmable button, and you can... Turn it on, and by default, is programmed for broadcast FM radio. This is off. <laughs> this is a, an LED light, because what HT is not complete without an LED light. And it's pretty cool, actually, because it's really nice and bright. So you can hit that button and turn on the LED like that, and you hit it a second time, and it has a red and blue flashing light. You hit it a third time, and it goes off. Um, got a, that's a really big display and a bright LED. So if you're taking this out to the hunting lease and sitting in the, the deer stand or sitting out in the woods until dusk, basically, and you need some light to walk back, or if you walk out to your deer stand in the morning and the sun hadn't come up yet, it'd be a good light to have. Or maybe that, because deer can't see color. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's I don't really care about flashlights too much on HTs, but this is a good one. So, I mean, if that's something you're going for, then great, but uh, uh, better than a cheese head flashlight, I guess. So, back to the radio here. Over on the side, the other side, this is just an er ergonomical bump here. It looks like a button, but it doesn't do anything, so that if you're holding it like that, it's even on both sides. So that's all that is. This is the, uh, of course, where the programming cable goes. It also comes with an earpiece with a concealed, coiled tube to go into the uh, to the ear. So it has like a concealed earpiece that comes with it. Push that back down, and it kind of snaps into place so that it's rainproof. Of course, that's where the light is. Um, it's got one volume knob on the top, and the channel uh, channels are selected 
by these up and down arrows here. It is a standard SMA connector on the radio with the SMA female being on the antenna itself and the male piece being on the radio itself. So you can change it out for your standard SMA female antennas if you choose. I found this antenna right here that comes with it would be pretty good though. So if we go zoom in a little bit here, actually now that looks pretty good. So we've got, this is the channel name. This is the name already programmed, N5EOC. It's a local repeater to me. Of course, you've got your icons across the top, including battery indicator, Bluetooth, um, signal, high and low power. And I'm not even, I'm not sure what that, there's a couple of pieces in the middle there. I'm not sure what those are. Uh, it does say in the manual, I just didn't look. And you've got dual display here. Now, on the left side is the arrow that shows you which band you're on. And to change bands, all you do is hit exit, and you see the arrow change. The arrow on the left changes, and it tells you top or bottom band. It also changes in the number in the middle, which is a little bit bigger font than these two down here. And that tells you what channel you're on. So in channel mode, you can name the channel, and you can tell it to display the channel name up here, or you can switch to the frequency. But it's the best of both worlds in channel mode because it's displaying your channel name and your frequency right there. And then you can go to the second band. And the reason it's displaying frequency is because it's in VFO mode. So one of the cool things is that you can go VFO mode or channel mode per band. So the top band right now is in channel mode. The bottom band's in VFO mode. If I hold down the menu button, mode. it goes to frequency mode. Then if I go down to the bottom band and hold down the menu button again, it goes back to channel mode. So you don't have to change the channel in VFO mode and have it affect both bands. You can have one band on channel mode and one band on VFO mode, vice versa, both on the same, however you want to do it. And then, of course, to change channels. And let me show the, show the voice prompt real quick because I always get asked this question about does it have a voice prompt? So it says one, two, three, four, the channel number. Menu. And it says menu if you hit menu. So it's, you can turn that off and on. It comes, by default, it comes turned on. You can turn that off in the menu if you don't want it. But I always get asked that question because there's some blind hams who are always interested in voice channels. So that's, this radio will fit that bill. So if we go into the menus here, menu. radio set, vox level, scroll down through it, that's the setting, settings of the radio itself, battery save, dual standby, you can turn that off and on, SOS mode, whatever that means. <laughs> so it's got some backlight timer, you can change some stuff in here like that. I think it's in... Yeah, there it is. So about machine, I don't know why they call it a machine, but that's just your versions. There's Bluetooth. By default, Bluetooth was turned off, so I had to go in here and turn it on in order to get it to read, read and write to the app. And readable by your Android phone, so it would write to the app. So that's where you do that. And it's got a couple, you can set CTC, set CTCSS, channel setting, channel storage rather, you can save channels to the memory. You can search frequencies, and then it goes back, and then you can factory reset it as well. It goes back to the top. So let's try to program a channel. I've already done this, but I still want to show everybody how to do it. So open up the app. It comes up to this screen, Bluetooth not connected. All you do is connect, and it scans, and it brings it up as a walkie-talkie and gives your MAC address there at the bottom. It'll connect, and it connects that quickly. Every time I've connected, it's connected that quickly. So now we've got walkie-talkie here. There's probably a way to go in the menu and rename the radio, but that's what it's named by default. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is read from the radio. I suggest doing this because it keeps all of the settings that you might have programmed in. Like, by default, it came with Bluetooth turned off. So I turned it on in the menu when I was poking around through the menu. It had timeout timer turned off. It had Bluetooth turned off. And it had... Uh, the the FM channels that were pre-programmed in there were all on narrow band. 
So I changed one or two of them. We'll show you how to do that. But all of those settings on the back end, like you can change the backlight timer and you can change uh, PTT ID and that kind of stuff. All of those settings on the back end are controlled through the app. So I suggest reading the radio first so you know what's already in the radio. And then the app will tell you what's in the radio after that. So we go here. And this is channel information. So this is going to tell you that's your channel number right there. You've got 17, actually 18 with zero right there. And it holds more channels than that. But this is a channel I programmed that I named in 5 voc receive and transmit frequency. I, progr I pro programmed all this myself. You can do an RX or a TX or both CTCSS tone or a DCS tone, digital PL. You can turn scan off and on. You can send allow. So you can turn transmit off in case you're just wanting a channel in there that you're monitoring. So you can turn that off and on. Like a, like a police or fire channel that you don't want to be able to transmit on accidentally if you hit the PTT button. Busy lockout. Transmit power is high. Wide narrow. Again, it was narrow when I first read the radio. So I turned it on wide because we use wideband FM and amateur radio. Signal code, PTT ID, and encryption. Now, encryption's turned off. I have looked high and low, and I have not found any evidence that th there's nothing in the manual, there's nothing in the box, and there's nothing on the website that says this is a Part 90 radio. So I don't know why they would add encryption to a radio that's marketed towards amateur radio, because it is on the amateur radio tab on radioaudity.com. I assume, you know what assuming does, that maybe one day they're that maybe they've submitted for a part 90 cert, uh, type acceptance for this radio certification for the radio i don't know okay i'm going to email them and ask them but i don't know so but anyway encryption is there we don't use it it's not part 90 so i would suggest staying away from it for right now at least for right now your choice though frequency mode you can go in here and set the vfo that's band a band b right there so it'll do, once again, it'll do, uh, you can set the frequency. You can program, you can just program a manual channel in here for, for simplex or a repeater. And for whatever reason, if you don't want to save it in memory, you can just put it into VFO through here. And then you've got optional features in here. This is where you set your squelch, battery save mode, Vox, backlight time, dual standby. You can turn that off and on. It is not dual receive. It's just dual standby. Timeout timer, voice prompt, so you can turn voice prompt off right there. Uh, nope, don't want to do that. And then it's got a bunch of other options in here. Auto lock, you can turn that off and on. So, just like that. Channel count is 128. It does hold 128 channels. And then uh, you can set DTMF tones in here too. So you could even save a, uh, you could save a, all-star link in here that you could press for DTMF to activate an all-star node if you wanted to. So once you've got all that set and you change anything you want in there, we go back to the home screen. And this is the part that kind of tricked me at first. I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't understand because it calls this, uh, if you go here, it says uh, cancel. It calls this, if, if you've never read your radio before this right here is a profile it calls it a device it says select device and i'm like it's not a device it's a profile because if you create a new device it will overwrite all of your stuff that's already in there so what you want to do is make sure that you're in a profile or device what it, what it calls select device and make sure that you're always in the right one. I guess you can set different profiles for when you travel out of town. Uh, you can program a certain repeaters at home and program a certain repeaters at work or something like that. So it's good for that. But like I've got two profiles in there right now. Test is just the first one I did. That's the one where I read the radio and added some repeaters and then wrote it back. And then I created a new one called just called G, G5, uh, GS5B. And when I wrote that, it wiped out everything. So it's like a profile list is what it is. So we're going to go and make sure that the test one is created. Again, I just that's just what I named it. You can call it whatever you want to. You go right. And you can see the status bar going across the screen again. And the screen of the radio just says program. And it's not too quick. It doesn't 
it doesn't take a real long time, but it's not instant. It connects via Bluetooth almost instantly. I was surprised at how fast Bluetooth connected, but it doesn't read and write that fast, but it is over Bluetooth. Okay, good deal. Now it rebooted the radio after it, uh, after it wrote to the, to the radio and rebooted. And then if you see just right there, it disconnected the Bluetooth. It does not auto reconnect the Bluetooth. So I think that's something that they should have added. I think that's something they should have added auto reconnect to Bluetooth because then I just have to go click on connect and it scans nearby Bluetooth devices again. It does leave the Bluetooth on because that was part of our profile we just wrote. I click on walkie talkie, connection successful, and it's right back there. So it's not a big deal, but if you just wrote to the radio and the radio rebooted as a result of you writing to it, and it reboots after you read from it also, it should auto reconnect to Bluetooth. That seems like something that was missed maybe. So anyway, we're gonna go down here and This is the N5EOC repeater. KC5HWB testing. And that was it. So you can see that it's, uh, it's easy to program. It does have the screen indicator on it. It tells you the channel name. It lets you go to VFO back and forth. It, um, oh, you know what? I don't think I showed you the back of the radio. Let me show you this real quick because this is important here. We zoom in just a touch. I kind of missed this part earlier. So we'll go ahead and do this. This is obviously, this is the Bluetooth charging cable. And it is a part of the battery. So if you have a second battery, you can USB charge a battery at the same time you're using the second battery in the radio. So the charging port's not on the radio, it's on the battery. It does connect with a screw on the back that makes it a little bit more snug on the back of the radio. It's a 2000 milliamp hour battery. And the, the best part, and this is always something I look for in HTs, the belt clip attaches to the radio itself. So if the battery comes off and you switch it out for a second battery, you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. the belt clip going with it. Uh, you can have one belt clip and multiple batteries and not have to put the belt clip on the battery, which I think is kind of dumb when they do that. So, so these are your charging ports right here for, for the desktop charger that it comes with. USB charger, second charger, and the belt clip on the back attaches to the radio itself. So that's a good addition and good, uh, good style of how to design the radio. I always like it when they do that. So pretty good um, results with it. I've been using this for I don't know, three or four days, something like that off and on. I had it sitting on my, I was in the shack recording videos all day yesterday and I had it sitting on the desk just monitoring the local repeater that I just keyed up. And, um, and the battery is today when I turn, and I turn the, I turned the radio off at the end of the day yesterday. And when I turned it back on today, the battery is about 60%. So it monitored all day yesterday, six, seven, eight hours, something like that. And, uh, and it's only down to 60% after monitoring all day. So the battery seems to last a long time. The screen is a color screen. It's got a lot going on on the screen, but it's not very big. So it must not have a very powerful draw on the screen. You can find all that information on radioddy.com about current draw and all that for the radio. So 73 guys, thanks for watching. Check out these videos over here. Let me know what you think in the comments below and catch you next time.